Hi guys, so for this experiment, we're going to investigate the different types of radiation, specifically uh, your alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. We'll do that by using a check source. Then we have this absorber here. So first one is just a piece of paper. Then the second absorber is an aluminum. So we have here aluminum uh, absorber with a thickness of about 328 milligram per square centimeter. Last one is lead absorber with a thickness of about 3,448 milligram per square centimeter. So let's start the experiment. Radiation was discovered in the late 1800s by Wilhelm Röntgen while working with high voltage arcs and gas tubes. Uh, later, uh, Madame Curie investigated radioactivity which is a property of a given element or isotope of an element wherein it emits radiation. With the concept of radioactivity by Madame Curie, it was found out that radiation can produce due to nuclear instability. For this demo experiment, uh, we will investigate three forms of radiation from nuclear decay, specifically an alpha particle which is just a helium atom or a helium nucleus, a uh, beta particle, same with an electron, and a gamma ray, which is a highly energetic photon. I have this diagram here. Uh, it demonstrates the ability uh, to penetrate matter of different kinds of ionizing radiation. Alpha particles are stopped by this uh, thin sheet of paper as shown, while beta particle is uh, stop uh, to an aluminum plate as shown. Last, we have a gamma radiation which is damp when it penetrates matter. For, for this case, uh, we have uh, lead that stops your gamma ray. Let us first measure background radiation. This is a measure of the level of ionizing radiation present in the environment without uh, any deliberate introduction of radiation sources. It can be natural or artificial. With a setup of 10 seconds, one run, and 900 volts as the operating voltage of the GM counter, this is our count. Let us now place our radiation source to our setup. For this uh, experiment, I will be using polonium-210 as my alpha source, so it decays by alpha emission from polonium-210 to lead 206. I will now run my software uh, using the same setup with uh, 10 seconds, 1 run, and 900 volts as my operating voltage. So I'm now getting a number of counts higher than my background uh, radiation count. I will now place a thin sheet of paper above my polonium-210 source. I will reset the software to make a new count record. And I will start this one, the software. Now I am getting a smaller number of counts for this setup. This is due to the fact that alpha particles have a short range. They don't travel very fast. Uh, they are easily stopped by anything solid, even a piece of paper. Now I'll be using a beta source. This is strontium-90, which is a radioactive isotope of strontium uh, produced by nuclear fission. Uh, it undergoes beta minus decay into yttrium-90 with a decay energy of 0.546 mega electron volts. I'm now getting number of counts. It is larger compared to my alpha source. Using the same source, uh, strontium-90 as a beta source here, I will now place a thin sheet of paper above it. Then, let us investigate the total number of counts using the same setup. Before, I get 771 counts. So, let's check. In general, beta particles are lighter than alpha particles and they generally have a greater ability to penetrate other materials. So thus, a piece of paper is not enough to stop beta particles. Now let us try to place 
18 sheet of aluminum above our strontium 90 source which emits beta particles I will reset this one and I will record a new count so it can be observed that the number of counts is smaller compared to the one with a thin sheet of paper that's it now let us place a cobalt 60 source which is a gamma emitter in our setup uh, cobalt 60 is a synthetic radioactive isotope of cobalt with a half-life of 5.27 years it is produced artificially in nuclear reactors. We are now get, getting its number of counts. And that's it for the setup. We will now place a piece of paper. And now we place a piece of paper above our cobalt source, which is a gamma emitter. Then let's run our software. Gamma radiation is the most penetrating of the three radiations. You can easily penetrate body tissue. You can be observed that you still get a significant number of counts for this setup. Now let us try to place a piece of a sheet of aluminum above our gamma source. Using the same setup, I will run my software. Okay, so we're still getting significant number of counts. Now let us place a lead, lead sheet above our gamma source. And uh, gamma is known to be a penetrating radiation. Thick, dense shielding is necessary to protect against gamma rays. The higher the energy of the gamma ray, the thicker the shield must be. X-rays pose a similar challenge for as this gamma ray source. Now, there is a significant decrease in the number of counts acquired in this setup. 